Okay. Well, we've done addition and subtraction of fractions very briefly, I admit, but at least you understand what you're trying to achieve by doing those. We have two more operations, as you may remember. We have multiplication and division. Of all the operations and fractions, multiplication is the easiest because what we simply do is multiply. So if we have, for example, Well, we can multiply the numbers straight across. 3 times 12 equals 36, and 4 times 15 is 60. Now, we can reduce the answer down because they both are even numbers, and any time you have both an even number numerator and denominator, they're always reducible, maybe more than once, maybe just once. So since they're both even numbers, we can divide them both by 2. So this one divided by 2 would give me 18. And 60 divided by 2 would give me 30. Well, again, I have even numbers, so I can divide them one more time. By 2 will give me 9, and divided by 2 will give me 15. Now, I can't divide these two by 2, but I do have a common divisor for them. It turns out to be 3, because 3 will go into 9, and 3 will go into 15. So I divide by 3, this gives me 3, and divide this one by 3 gives me 5. And we have three-fifths of the answer. Now, there is a method you can do. It's called cross-canceling. And it saves you a great deal of time. It just gets you the answer more quickly. So let's look at this problem again. We have 3 fourths times 12 fifteenths. Now, you may not always be able to cross-cancel. It only works if you can cross-cancel diagonally. You don't cross-cancel vertically or horizontally. So we look at 3. 3 and 15 are both divisible by 3, so 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 15 five times. 12 and 4, well, 4 go into 12, so 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 12 three times. Now multiply 3 times, 1 is 3, 1 times 5 is 5. We got exactly the same answer as I got here, much more quickly by cross-canceling. It's one of those things you'll learn as a tool when you're multiplying fractions, okay? One thing you can't do, however, is multiply mixed numbers the same way. Here we have to make these into improper fractions, okay? So 2 times 4 is 8, 1 is 9, 9 fourths times 3 times 5 is 15, 2 is 17 fifths. And here we cannot cross cancel. Nothing goes evenly into 5 and 3 or 4 and 17. So in this case, you would have to multiply straight across. So 9 times 17, well, 10 times 17, 170. One way to do this is take 17 away. 17 is 3, <clears throat> 153. And 5 times 4 is 20. Now, it's an improper fraction, and you wouldn't want to leave it in that form. So what you would do is divide the 20 into 153 and come up with a mixed number as your answer. So 20 goes into 153. Well, 20 goes into 100 five times, and then you have two more 20s, which is 5, 6, 7 times. 2 times 7 is 14. We get 3, and we have 13 20 is. So the answer to this will be 7 and 13 20 is. In multiplying fractions, you always have to make sure that the mixed numbers are made into improper fractions, then multiply as you would with regular fractions, okay? Okay, the next operation, of course, the only one we have left for fractions was division. Now, division of fractions is kind of odd because we really don't do division. What we end up doing is we do multiplication. And we do it by a very specific rule. So if I have this set up as a fraction, I'm saying, okay, what is 5 eighths divided by 3 fourths? Well, I can't divide. What I do is I make it into a division problem by inverting the second fraction, or what we call using its reciprocal. A reciprocal is one of a fraction when you turn it upside down. So what I do is I do this. I take 5 over 8 times 4 over 3. Notice I inverted this fraction. You always invert the one behind the sign. Or if it's written in this form, And the thing is, it's behind the sign or below the line is the one that you invert. So now I make it into a simple multiplication problem. 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 8 two times. 3 and 5 I can't do anything with, so 5 times 1 is 5. And 2 times 3 is 6, and my answer turns out to be 5 sixths. Now why do we do that? 
Well, there's a very good reason for it. A number divided by another number, basically, is the same as a number multiplied by the reciprocal of the second number, okay? So what I mean is this. Take a whole number. For example, let's take, um, we have 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. Now, if I take 6 and make it into a fraction and I multiply it by the reciprocal of this one, which would be 2 over 1, 1 over 2, remember these can have a 1 under them and it makes them into fractions. So I take the first number and I multiply it by the reciprocal of the second. I go 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 three times. I get 3 over 1, which equals 3. I get the same answer. The reason for that, doing this when we're doing division of fractions, is we don't have to do the division. We do multiplication of the reciprocal. We end up with the same answer we would have. Because division with fractions is very complex. It can be done, but it's a much more arduous task. And you really don't need to do that. Just multiply by the reciprocal of the second number. You have the correct answer. Okay?